Hi friends, my name is Meredith from Story Adventures with Meredith. And today's story is going to be A Few Beautiful Minutes Experiencing a Solar Eclipse. And this book is written by Kate Allen Fox and illustrated by Koa Lee. And as you can probably guess from the subtitle, Experiencing a Solar Eclipse, this book is all about a solar eclipse. And that is when the moon covers up the sun for a little part of time during the day. So it makes the daytime feel like nighttime for a little bit. And this year, we're really lucky because there is going to be a solar eclipse. They're rare. They don't happen all the time. So parts of the United States, Canada, and Mexico will have a chance to experience seeing a solar eclipse. And that's going to happen on April 8th. 2024. So if you live in one of those places, you might want to check out and see if you will be able to view the solar eclipse where you live. So where I live in Vermont, it the solar eclipse will be right above us at about 2.15 in the afternoon. So we'll get to see it. And that's why I'm really excited to read more about a solar eclipse in this book. Under a broad blue sky, from coast to coast, we gather for a rare illusion, a total solar eclipse, when the sun vanishes into thin air for a few beautiful minutes. In the endless expanse of space, the universe prepares for a show one the sun and moon have given us since the dawn of time. They find their places as the performance begins. The sun, forever the star, beams vast and vibrant, her stage unchanged. But the moon has already begun gliding, sliding, slipping into the spotlight to steal the sun's glory for a few beautiful minutes. Now, I love the moon too, so I don't know if it needs to steal any glory, but it is going to be the spotlight in the day, which is unusual for the moon. Little by little, she hides the sun. Our eyes alone can't see the change. The sun, still too bright, can burn them for life. So we look through our sun viewers and see that the glowing giant seems shrunken, her circle chipped into a crescent. In the shadows of trees, slivers of light mirror the sun's shifting silhouette. You can see here how the sun is going to make different shadows. Um, on the ground as you move through the eclipse. And people have viewers. You can also get special glasses, which I can show you after the book. The moon moves farther and farther in front of the sun, a small sphere striving to overshadow a giant for a few beautiful minutes. Moment by moment for an hour or more, the stage transforms. The sun grows slimmer, the sky dimmer. As a midday twilight takes shape, the world grows more dark than light as eerie orange hues hug the horizon. Above us, the sky becomes as dark as the deep sea. Stars, shining brighter than ever, twinkle in that darkness. Birds roost for the night as crickets and bats wake. Temperatures plummet as the chill of night nips at our ears. In the cold, in the dark, in anticipation, we wait for those few beautiful minutes. The last rays of light fade away. And the moment arrives. The corona, the sun's atmosphere or crown, now shimmers around the moon, 
the unlikely queen of the solar system. The corona's lightning-like tentacles grasp at space. Their glow dances in our eyes, all of us aware of our own tininess, all captivated and connected for those tiny, precious minutes. In the crowd is one tiny, precious you. Arms spread wide in the sweet, cool grass, under a velvet panorama, you come face to face with the splendor of the universe for a few beautiful minutes. But it cannot last. All shows must end. The moon glides on, the sun reemerges, reclaiming her daytime throne. As light creeps back to earth, we look around at one another. Once strangers, now we are friends. People who, together, glimpsed the extraordinary. Speechless, we smile, we hug and high five, and we remember all that we saw. For a few beautiful minutes. So that is the book, A Few Beautiful Minutes, all about the solar eclipse. And this is a paper from NASA about what the phases of the solar eclipse will look like. So it starts here at number one, and then you can see the sun starting to get smaller and smaller as it goes to two, three, four, then five, five is the center. That is when the moon is covering the sun. Then we go six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 is when the moon has passed and the sun is back in the sky again. And I also wanna show you those eclipse glasses. <laughs> so I've got a pair right here. And when you put them on, it is absolutely dark. You can't see anything through these right now. But you need glasses like this or a special kind of viewer if you are going to look up at the eclipse. Because even though it seems like the sun is not there anymore, it is still in the sky and could still burn your eyes and hurt you. So you need to have something special to help you look up at the sun during the eclipse. So I have glasses. In the book, they use glasses or they have special viewers that they made out of boxes. So you can find things like that or ways to make things like that. So that if you are in a place where you'll get to see the eclipse, you can look up at it too. You can also take pieces of paper with holes and see all of these different shadows that the sun and the moon together will make through the eclipse. Now the eclipse doesn't last for very long. As you can see from this piece of paper, this tells you how long each phase will be in the sky. And it averages at about 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter for each phase. So it's not very long. And it starts at 2.15 where I live and it's gonna be over by 4.37. So it's a short period of time in the day, but it is interesting to see. And I like how in the book it talks about, it feels like night for all the animals too. They might get confused and think, oh, it's time for me to wake up. The bats might, um, like nocturnal animals like bats might think it's time for them to wake up, but it's really still daytime. It just feels like night. So that is all about the solar eclipse that's happening this year. And if you want more information about that, you can 
go to my website, storyadventureswithmeredith.com, or you can go to nasa.gov and get more information about it. You can also check your local weather channels and see sometimes they've been reporting about it, especially in places where you will be able to view the solar eclipse. So I really appreciate that you were here today to talk about the eclipse with me, and I can't wait for our next story adventure. Bye for now. Thanks for watching Story Adventures with Meredith. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.